In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 23 and 24, we read, Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. The scripture here emphasizes that as Christians, we have only one true authority in our lives, the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't mean to say that we are never to be in subjection to anyone, for there will be those who circumstantially are set over us. Yet even to those, our submission can only go as far as the word of God will allow. Please remember to apply this also in areas of giving and follow the scripture accordingly. Even within the body of Christ, Jesus directly discouraged his disciples from taking authority, one over another, that is, saying, But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. It is up to God, the Holy Spirit, to direct each one of us in the way he wants us to go. Yet at times this can be hard for us to grasp, and we might even fight against the disapproval of other Christians, which makes it really tough. We should be careful to be sure we're seeking God's approval and not that of men alone. Remember again that we are saved by grace through faith, and so our own best intended actions will account for nothing with God, only that which is founded through Jesus Christ. But the apparent results of even the true works of our calling may seem doubtful in the eyes of others, and they might leave us perplexed as well. We see that as Elijah fulfilled his godly calling, he was granted a great victory over hundreds of false prophets, yet on the heels of this he fled for his life from Queen Jezebel. The Apostle Paul wrote that in the course of his service, he was pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. And all we all remember Stephen, Stephen who was stoned to death for the Lord, the Bible describes him as a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. We should be careful not to fall into the trap of merely doing good works of legalism and focus instead on seeking the mercy of God in humility, as we read of in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Even after centuries of biblical instruction, many are still struggling with the sinful respect of persons God has warned us about. Now, there's nothing wrong with seeking the advice of other good Christian men and women, but in the end, we must get the sure direction of our calling from the Lord alone. And sometimes this will mean going it alone, at least for a season, even if those seasons drag on for long periods. It's all about finding the calling that God has for us and abiding there no matter what it costs. In both 2 Chronicles 35.15 and Mark 13.34, we see that the role of the porter is a rather isolated one, but it is essential for brethren in Christ. Even in the days of Jesus' flesh when he was here, the scripture records a disciple that was serving God who remained apart from the main body of disciples in Mark chapter 9, verse 38. And when the Lord is telling us of conditions in the last days, the description in Mark 13, 13 naturally implies great difficulty and isolation when it says the following, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It goes without saying that as Christians we are individual members of the body of Christ, even as our physical bodies have unique parts for unique functions. In this case, though, we are considering the spiritual application made by the Holy Spirit, and we can only see in part. Our stumbling then comes in two ways, but it is reflected in one scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, 12, that says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. And so this comparison with others can take place either internally, within us, or externally, either when we model ourselves too much after others in God's service, or when others try to force us into a mold they're already familiar with. We need to resist improper impulses and examine all things by prayer, walking by the measure of faith God has given to us individually. Brethren, I encourage you today to seek God's calling in your life day to day, and once it is found, abide therein, simply but steadfastly. Jesus is our righteousness and our justifier, but we will account individually for our actions in this life. 
May God bless you today. But please remember to check the description for the related scriptures from the King James Bible.